Okay. So. Uh, so, I'll say, you say, Anukulyasya Sankalpa, Pratikulyasya Varjanam, Rakshishyatiti Vishvaso, Goptrit Vedananta, Atmanikshepa Karpanye, Shadvidha Shadanagatihi. The six divisions of surrender are the acceptance of those things favorable to devotional service, the rejection of unfavorable things, the conviction that Krishna will give protection, the acceptance of the Lord as one's guardian or master, full self-surrender, and humility. So we are on number five, Atman Nikshepa, full self-surrender, and we are going to sing a song. This is it. Manasa Deha Geha, which is a song in his book, Sharanagati, songbook, that focuses on this Atman Shepa or Atman Vedana. You ready? <laughs> okay. So I have the words here, just to, to the Bengali. Looks like the band has disbanded, huh? Are we ready to? <laughs> okay. And just, you know, one time through, you know, just expedite, you know, one, one, you sing and we sing one chorus like that. Okay. Manasate ho ge ho, yo ki chumo, arpi hutu ya pade, nanda ki Manasa de ho ge ho jo ki chumo apilu tu apade nanda ki so Ah! Uh -huh. 
Thank you very much. <laughs> so now will be the translation. Mine, body, and family, whatever may be mine, I have surrendered at your lotus feet, O youthful son of Nanda. In good fortune or bad, in life or death, all my difficulties have disappeared because I have chosen those lotus feet of yours as my only shelter. Slay me or protect me as you wish, for you are the master of your eternal servant. If it is your will that I be born again, then may it be in the home of your devotee. Let me be born again even as a worm, as long as I may remain your devotee. I have no desire to be born as a Brahma averse to you. I yearn for the company of that devotee who is completely free of all desire for worldly enjoyment or liberation. Father, mother, lover, son, lord, preceptor, husband, you are everything to me. Bhaktivinoda says, O Khan, please hear me. O Lord of Radha, you are my life and soul. So this is the perfect expression of Atmani Vedana, full surrender. And we'll explore a little more. This is from Srila Prabhupada's uh, purport to 7523. This is the famous verse, Shavanam Kirtanam Vishnu Swaranam, spoken by Prahlad Maharaj to his father. And that's the longest purport in the entire Srimad Bhagavatam. It goes through these nine and goes through 64 elements of, of devotional service. And he's going one by one through the nine purses. And this is the one of, for Atmani Vedanam. This is part of Prabhupada's explanation. The word Atmani Vedanam, full surrender, refers to the stage at which one has no motive other than to serve the Lord, uh, the, uh, that which one who has no uh, motive other than to serve the Lord surrenders everything to the Lord and performs his activities only to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such a devotee is like a cow that has cared, is cared for by its master. When cared for by its master, a cow is not in anxiety over its maintenance. Such a cow is always devoted to its master and it never acts independently, but only for the master's benefit. So the perfect emblem of this is Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj is the uh, exemplar for Atmanivedanam. He had conquered the whole universe and taken Indra's position. But when Lord Vamanadeva approached him in the guise of a little Brahmin and begged just three steps of land, he rejected his spiritual master Shukracharya's advice and gave the land in charity. Despite then losing everything, 
being cursed by his former guru, and being arrested and bound up, he never wavered in his devotion to the Lord. So just real quickly, one thing I mentioned last night, I'm not allowed to sit like that in front of the deities. <laughs> Sorry. It's in the nectar devotion. So Bali Maharaj, it's interesting, because Bali Maharaj was a grandson of Prahlad Maharaj. And uh, just like Prahlad, not exactly like Prahlad, but similar, Prahlad was a devotee born into a dynasty of Asuras, or demons. Now he was special because he was instructed in the womb by Narada Muni. Now Bali wasn't instructed like that, but he was a devotee uh, who has covered for a while by uh, demonic qualities. And so he uh, conquered the universe. He kind of, the demigods had become weak because they uh, uh, had uh, lost their uh, spiritual master. And so he conquered the demigods' uh, places, which is the universe, and uh, he was sitting on the throne of Indra. Uh, but then Aditi, the mother of the demigods, came to uh, the Lord and prayed somehow or other, can you arrange for me to get my, my sons can get their kingdom back. And so then she went to her husband. Her husband gave her this milk, the Pyo Vrata ceremony, in which there's an austerity where ladies, they drink milk only for eight days or so. I'm sorry, I forget the details. And so many rituals and mantras and things. And then pregnancy will occur. So the pregnancy was Vamana Dev. Vamana Dev is, is an incarnation of Krishna. And uh, he appeared, as he's in the back there, as a little Brahmin boy. Very, very beautiful and attractive. And the reason why is because he knew that Bali, although he was an Asura, he was a, how can I say, a pious Asura? In the sense, he respected Brahminical culture. Jarasan had that same idea, right? And he was also conquered on the basis of that, where the Brahmin, Krishna and, and, and Bhima and Arjun came, dressed as Brahmins, and begged charity. And he said, these aren't any Brahmins. They don't look like Brahmins. They got their huge shoulders and muscles, and they got the, the mark for the, for the uh, arrow, you know, over their, over their shoulder. But even so, he said, whatever you want, I'll give you my whole kingdom, you know. But they begged charity of a, of a, of a, a fight, and eventually Bhima conquered him and killed him. So Bali wasn't a demon. He was actually a devotee, but he was in a demon's garb. And so Vamana came, very effulgent, they're performing these sacrifices, and he walks toward the assembly. And Shukacharya can see right away, this is actually Vishnu. <laughs> so he was worried. The Shukacharya was the materialistic, he's in the background there, giving him advice with the beard. And so Vamana, you know, this is Brahmacharya, they beg for charity. So uh, he spoke some wonderful words, and, and, and Bali offered him anything he wants. You want a planet? You know, whatever you want. And so Vamana said, no, no, I just want three steps of land. And Bali says, I can offer you so much. Why just three steps of land? And Vamana said, I, I'm a Brahmin. If I couldn't be satisfied with three steps of land, I wouldn't be satisfied with the whole universe. So he's teaching. So then the question is, is he going to actually give it or not? And uh, Shukacharya saw that if he gave that three steps of land, he's going to take everything. And then who's going to maintain me? Because I'm... And Shukracharya is being maintained by Bali. Bali would have nothing left, so it was a, it was a business calculation. <laughs> anyway, the critical decision was made by Bali to give up his spiritual master, which is a serious thing, and to actually give those three steps of land. And of course, when he did so, suddenly, <laughs> Vamana expanded, 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 huge, big of the universe. With his first step, he covered all the, the earth. With the next step, he covered the entire universe, and although it's not in the Bhagavatam, it's in the Purana, because the story is known by everybody. He poked a hole in the covering, and the Ganges, the causal ocean water leaked in, and that became the Ganges water coming down all the way onto the earth. It's, it's soaked with the foot dust of Vishnu. So then the, then the critical step, you know, the question is, okay, you promised me three steps. With two steps, I took everything, so where, are you gonna, where am I going to put my three, third step? And of course, he gave us, and he put it on my head. So in this way, he surrendered. He became the exemplar for surrendering everything. Anyway, the story goes on there, but Bali became his Mahajan. And specifically, he's the exemplar for this Atmanivedanam. And the lesson is, is that 
uh, for devotees, you know, this is one of the main lessons that everything is owned and controlled by the Lord. He's the source of everything. You learn right in the Bhagavad Gita, right, that all the energies are emanating from Krishna. So what can we actually own? We don't own anything. We're simply here temporarily. But the false ego, which is what binds us to this world, is giving us this separat separatist mentality. We forget all about Krishna, and we have our little sphere of influence, and we try to expand it. And in this way, there are conflicts locally and internationally for getting uh, th these false uh, possessions that really are in ours. So Atman debated him, all of these principles of surrender mean to recognize who we really are, what we really are, and to be, recognize our complete dependence on Krishna, and that he, is, that he can do with us whatever he wants. That's the mood of that song. Everything I have, says Bhaktivinoda Thakur, really belongs to you. Now you do with me whatever you want. My only request is that I, birth after birth, I'm able to be your servant. That's the really only pure request of a devotee. So let's go on. And this, if there's any questions on these points, you can raise your hand. So, so there's some, some wonderful verses for uh, surrendering everything, and we'll explore some of these. Let's uh, activate our tambura. Let's see. Nadharma nishto smina chatma veri. Na bhakti maam tot charanara vinde. Akincha no nanyagati saranya. Tot pada mulam saranam papadye. Okay, I'm sorry I didn't give the reference. I'm pretty sure this is from Yamunacharya's Stotra Ratna. There's so many uh, verses from there. I am not a virtuous person fixed in the principles of religious conduct, conduct, nor am I a great transcendentalist awake to spiritual knowledge, nor have I the slightest trace of devotion to your lotus feet. O refuge of the devotees, though I am so unqualified, please let me take shelter under your lotus feet, for I am lost in this material world. I possess nothing of value, and I have no place to turn. So this is a, a common mood of this Atmani Vedanam, is that we really don't have any other meaningful shelter but Krishna. All of the other shelters are false shelters. We discussed this already. That material life really means uh, taking shelter of various things, whether it's your body, your money, your your country or anything, and then being betrayed. The, the shelter it turns out to be a stone boat. You know the analogy of the stone boat. You're trying to go into the, across an ocean and you get in, in, in a boat, but it's stone and it goes like 20 feet and sinks. And that's the, the, the right at the beginning of the Bhagavatam, when it begins again in the beginning of the second canto. Really, the, the first canto is kind of a long introduction. Many important instructions, obviously, but the second canto, Shukadev begins speaking. And This is a verse describing what I just mentioned. How the uh, materialists, those who are not absorbed in uh, transcendental sound, hearing and chanting, uh, they have many uh, shelters or what he called fallible soldiers, things that are meant to help us, defend us against the miseries of this world. It begins with the body, the family, uh, money, uh, so many things, extensions from there. So these are atma sainyeshu, asatsu, they're fallible. Atma sainyeshu means your, your army, you know, your defense against difficulty. Even though it's obvious, nobody, nobody lives forever, right? Uh, and your money comes and goes, it's known as chanchalam. Teisham uh, pramato nidanam pasyam. Even though these mad materialists, they see in front of their eyes that these soldiers fail all the time. Pasyam api na They don't see. It doesn't strike them. So 
the, the, uh, the idea of, here the word shararam is used twice in this verse, that as we discussed last time, Krishna's lotus feet are actually the, the firm shelter because they're indestructible. And he uh, is never, uh, the word, you, did you know that the word used most often in the Bhagavad Gita is avyayam? Check it out, avyayam. Avyayam means never decreases. In, inexha inexhaustible, Prabhupada says in one purport. That applies to the soul as well as the supreme soul, Krishna. So isn't that the kind of shelter you want? Some boat that will never sink, some person who will never fail you, who's always your friend, surit. So this, this faith, the Atmani Vedanam, all of these, these elements of uh, surrender are based on faith, are based on faith. And how does that faith develop? It develops through uh, ex uh, practicing devotional service, experiencing the tangible effect of chanting and hearing and other processes of devotion. It also uh, uh, develops very strongly with association with the faithful. And that, is, and that association can be very strong with, with the great devotees through the books, through media. See, now, Srila Prabhupada showed a perfect example in our own history, not that long ago, of someone who had this faith, who had this surrender, and whom, whom Krishna protected at so many steps. It's historical fact, you can see. So these kinds of, of, of uh, experiences help build our faith upon which we can uh, enact these six elements of surrender. So let's go on, unless there's any question. Uh, okay, here's another one. This is from the Bhagavatam itself. Manaso vritteyo naksyu Krishna Padam Bajashraya Va Vacho Bidhahi Nir Nam Nam Kayas Tat Pravanadi Shu Nanda and the other cowards said, Now this is at the end of chapter 47. Now, chapter 47 is a very important chapter of the Bhagavatam. Does anyone know what's in chapter 47? This is Uddhava's visit to, to, to uh, Braja, to Gokula, sent by Krishna, uh, in order to deliver a message, right? Because he didn't return right away. The gopis and everybody else are pining away for him, from him. And uh, to also learn. Uddhava was such an intimate associate of Krishna. He wanted to see he wanted Uddhava to see the highest levels of devotion, especially from the gopis. So after his whole visit, and in there you have the song to the bee, you know, Radharani's song, where she's showing the highest levels of, of love and separation. I don't know if you know, there's, there's so many levels of understanding. She's, there's ten verses in this song to the bee. And each one of those verses demonstrates a different kind of mad talking. If you, if you open up that book, you see in the purport, it's the first purport, there's four, ten different kinds, I forget what they all are, jalpa, patijalpa, sujalpa, different kinds of jalpa. And each one of them uh, is an example of a different kind of mad talking. This is, and Lord Chaitanya, this is right in, in the Krishna book, it describes, he was in that mood of Radharani when Uddhava came, and in the separation for those last 12 years in uh, Puri. He demonstrated the highest levels of love and separation. So, this is at the, after the, near the very end of the chapter, when Uddhava is getting set to go. He has an incredible verse, which I memorized but can't call to mind right now, where he prays to be a little shrub in Vrindavan so he'll get sprinkled by the dust of the gopi's feet. He says, let me take birth in Vrindavan somehow. He's already at such an exalted level. A personal associate of Krishna, trusted advisor and confidant, but he sees the, the incredible level of devotion and intensity of love that is expressed by all the residents, especially the gopis. So he's saying, let me just be born as a, as a shrub or a bush in Vrindavan. So after all of that, he's getting ready to go. And this is, uh, the, the cowards and Nanda say this beautiful verse. Uh, May our mental functions always take shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. May our words always chant his names. And may our bodies always bow down to him and serve him. What a wonderful prayer. We can pray like that also. <laughs> you know, these, 
these prayers, as Maharaj was speaking, mentioning this morning, by hearing about these great devotees and chanting about them, discussing them, and trying to emulate them, this is association. This is meaningful association. What the mind gets absorbed in, that's who you become. So these qualities, these most exalted qualities, we can begin to develop them, at least the desire to attain them, through hearing the Shastra, hearing these descriptions of the Leela. So this is all part of the process of surrender, is developing the desire to do it. You notice that, that uh, you know, in Bhaktivinoda's songs, especially the early ones, he says, I will do this, I will do this, you know? I will accept this, I will, I, I will no longer, you know, uh, I will live in the Dham. And he's, this is called Sankalpa. This is called a will. It's not exactly a vow. A vow is like at a different level. But, it, but your, your desire, and you, you uh, articulate it. And this affects the mind. It gives you the power to, to you know, give it up. I don't know if I gave this uh, uh, reference before. But there are, there are certain aspects of the material world that are very instructive to us. I remember, uh, you know, I, I've been living in San Diego for almost 30 years now. And I didn't even know until a few years ago that right up the street, there's a major chapter of AA. You know what AA is, right? Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> so we had a fellow who somehow got interested in the Krishna consciousness. He came down from there. He wasn't, he wasn't, a, he wasn't a, an alcoholic. Well, he wasn't active, but he had been, you know. So he came down and he got a little into it. So he invited me up there. And he wanted me to speak. <laughs> so to speak, you, you've seen, you know, you stand up and say, my name is Dravida Das and I'm an alcoholic. Well, wait, I can't, I can't say that, you know. I, I used to drink beer when I was 18 years old. That was 50 years ago, so I'm over it. So, but, I, you know, they don't even, they gave these little buttons out, these little coins, you know, six months, one year, five years. So the longest is 30 years. So I didn't even, they didn't even have one that was old enough for me that I can... But the idea is that there's a lot of similarities in the sense that on your own, uh, they know that they can't beat it, right? Uh, th th these addictions, alcohol, drugs, whatever it may be, there's other things, um, are just extreme examples of what all of us are in the material world uh, going through. There's a verse in Bhagavad Gita uh, in 15th chapter where Krishna describes the process of, this, of transmigration and it's Shrotram Chakshu Sparsha Nangsha Rasadam Grana Mevacha. Adishchaya Manishchaya Vishayanu Pasevate. He's describing how this, you know, this ordinary happens for everybody who dies, is not, doesn't go back to Godhead. They, uh, you go to another body, the soul takes its mentality with it, you know, describing like the wind takes a fragrance, and probably in the purport it could be over a garbage heap or it can be over a flower garland, depending on what you do during your life. In other words, it's all up to us what kind of mentality we, we cultivate. So then you get a certain kind of uh, eye and ear and tongue, all the senses grouped around the mind in a new body. That mentality is the template for your new body. Now that word upasevate, now he says that with those senses you then uh, engage with so the sense objects in whatever body you're in. And the word upasevate, I looked it up, it's in the dictionary. One of the meanings is become addicted to, to become addicted to. So every, you know, the hog becomes addicted to stool, you know, take the halva, you know. So we're all, in human bodies also, a certain set of sense objects, we're very much accustomed to engaging with them. So now in Krishna consciousness, we know this is not good, this material sense gratification, either in the mode of goodness, passion, or ignorance. So how can I break this addiction? Well, you need, we need help. That's why Prabhupada is so adamant about starting an association. Sangha. In the association of others who are a little more advanced and striving, and especially in the association of someone who's advanced like a pure devotee, you can get the inspiration, you can get the spiritual strength, which is, they, they talk about that in AA, to uh, overcome your addictions, to fight them and do things, act in such a way that they'll, the, the grip will loosen on you. And it's exactly like that with, with devotional service. By cultivating devotional service, developing faith, and then acting on it, chanting Hare Krishna, and doing other things, 
accepting what's favorable, rejecting what's unfavorable, then you become attracted to Krishna. That, that very attraction that was there on the nasty things becomes transferred. And as soon as that begins to happen, the grip is loosened. We've all experienced this to some degree. So Atman Ivedanam uh, is what, you know, the, the, the complete uh, transference. We recognize our complete dependence on Krishna and there's, uh, there's no more hedging of the bets. As Mark talked about hedging. <laughs> you know, this is, this is Atman Ivedanam is full surrender. So this is part of the mood. We can learn so much. These are Nanda, these are the greatest devotees. May our mental functions always take shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. Okay. Uh, so this one, I put it into a little poem. Um, we can chant. This is from the Stavamala. Vidachaya mahidandam dinabhando dayangba Gatadihina Bhavat Tak Kachadan Yama Masti Nit Nipatata Shatakoti Nibalangba Navambhas Tadapikila Peyodak Stuyate Chatakena Okay. The Chataka subsists on rain it catches in midair, and so it's always praying to the cloud to send its fare. Yet though the cloud may send a thunderbolt instead of rain, that bird continues praying fervently despite the pain. Just like the Chataka, I fixed my mind upon one goal, and that is you, O oh Lord, most kind to every fallen soul. So whether it is punishment you give or mercy sweet, I'll always pray to you for service to your lotus feet. <laughs> now this, <laughs> this is a very uh, significant mood because we may surrender and feel surrendered today, but tomorrow something may happen to challenge that mood of surrender. In other words, in Krishna consciousness, the highest kind of service we do, the most intense yuga dharma, is Harinam Sankirtan, right? And if we get into a, into a uh, wonderful kirtan, or maybe even a kirtan retreat, days on end, you know, we'll be absorbed and we're, we're flying and we're on seventh heaven, better than seventh heaven, Goloka Vindavan, right? <laughs> and we feel like, I've made it. <laughs> but then we have to go back to our cities, right? And we're out of the association. We can't hear the drums anymore, the kirtan, Madhav is not singing. And... So then our impurities, our latent impurities come out and we, real, and we realize, oh, I'm not Atman Vedanam yet, right? So there are, there, are always, there are challenges along the path. And part of those challenges are when things don't go right or even some serious obstacles happen. It can be a health crisis, a financial crisis, somebody close to you may have a problem of one sort or another. All kinds of things can disrupt our uh, peaceful execution of Krishna consciousness. So this is, this is the, uh, a verse. Some of you may think of another verse that's very close to this by Lord Brahma, where he says, Tatenu kampam susamikshamano bunjana evat mukatam vipakam. That, my dear Lord, says Lord Brahma, uh, I, I'm seeing everything as your mercy. And I, whatever ill happens to me, I regard as a result of my own previous activities. I'm not blaming you, you know. And for, for someone who has this attitude and continues to serve Krishna with full enthusiasm, with mind, body, and words, that person has kind of bought a ticket to Goloka. The analogy is, uh, uh, what is it? Tattenu kampam susamikshamano bunjana evat mukutam vidvag vapubir vidadan namaste jivetayo mukti padesa daya bak. This word daya bak is used when there's someone's going to inherit, inherit some property. If you're scheduled to inherit something, all you have to do is stay alive. Right? So Prabhupada says in one commentary, oh, just stay alive in Krishna consciousness. And, you know, sincerely, you can go back to God. So, but you see the challenge. 
Because if there's a materialistic tinge to our devotion, and we're expecting, well, I've been chanting so long, and I've been doing this, why did this happen? Why did I get this disease? Why, why am I having financial difficulty, or whatever, you know? And you're looking around for someone to blame. Well, you can blame so many people, and you might even blame Krishna, or you lose faith. This, this happens all the time in materialistic religions. You know, we, we, I'm not, I don't travel that much, but I know that in Europe, the churches are mostly empty. You go to France, you'll see atheism much more prominent than in America. Yes. And maybe it's because of World War II, all of the, you know, the horror that took place there when people lost faith, but whatever. It means that uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a materialistic tinge to the religion. It's, it's not pure. This kite of a dharma that's kicked out at the beginning of Bhagavatam. So here's the Chataka. Now the Chataka, he's taken a vow to only drink pure water that comes from the cloud. He won't even go down to drink in a puddle. You just, you know. But sometimes a cloud is going to throw the thunderbolt. So that's the test. He says, I've been so faithful waiting for you to pray and now you're throwing a thunderbolt? All right, I'm giving up. No. He continues praying, you see. So this is, the devotee is saying, Rupa Goswami, like the Chataka, we have to continue praying to Krishna fervently, even though we have difficulties in our devotional service. It's a test. And this is what Atmani Vedan is all about. No matter what happens, no matter what happens, we continue trying to serve Krishna. Because really, and here is the key point, the reciprocation that Krishna gives is nothing material. It's in the heart which cannot be affected by anything material. And that reciprocation comes in the form of greater attraction for him, greater a taste for hearing and chanting, the, experiencing the sweetness of the holy name. That's, the, that's the, uh, the reciprocation, the purification. And uh, being able to uh, experience Krishna in your lives more and more. That's what the reciprocation is. We may get sick, we may have difficulties here, <laughs> outside in this world, you know, it's, isn't it kind of seasonally warm here now? You know, the climate is changing like crazy. Who knows what's going to happen? You know, we may find ourselves in a deep freeze. I'm living in San Diego. It could get to be 30 degrees there. Who knows? You know, so, then, well, you know, am I going to, is my, is my devotion going to waver because of that? No. And the example, the perfect example, current example, or very, is Srila Prabhupada how he kept that you know, determination despite anything, you know, to try really to the point of death to push this movement on in, in the United States. I lived in New York in 1965, freezing cold, especially cold winter, and his prophet came in September and experienced that winter from Bengal, you know, so much difficulty. But he pressed on, pressed on, and Krishna uh, showered his mercy on him. So any questions on this verse? Go ahead. Uh, do we have the mic? I know you only have this. Yeah, just take it off. Oh, you really took it off. <laughs> yeah, we go. Is it on? Oh, good. Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you very much for your uh, presentation so far. Now on this verse, uh, since you mentioned Srila Prabhupada, uh, I, it can be observed that Prabhupada himself was not a very successful businessman. Right. And one of the reasons he wasn't a successful businessman, he was, he was because of his determination to preach and to promote the holy name. So, and going back to your previous slide, uh, my question in this regard is, if we're not doing this, if we're not somehow or other wrecking our normal material life, if we're not doing something like that, are we really falling short of full surrender? Uh, good question. The, the, the first statement, I'm, I, I'm not sure I'm gonna, ready to accept that because Prabhupada, uh, it's true that his business failed, that's, that's for sure. And, it, and the way he recounts it, you know, he tried like anything to do it. But the way he explains it, he would always quote this verse from the uh, tenth cano, "Yesya uh, hamanagunami harishe taddanangshanai," is that Krishna says, I think it's to Yudhishthira, if I really show my mercy to someone, I take away his wealth, gradually take away his wealth, 
And then the verse goes on, and then his family members don't like him anymore and kick him out of the house. So he has no, no shelter, so then he takes full shelter of me. You know, now Prabhupada gave that example. Of course, we have to kind of understand it from the right point of view. But uh, he, he thought when he first joined the, the Gaudiya Math, he was already married. He had a child or a child on the way, I forget. But, and he was very responsible. So he, he, he's, he's, he, I think he wrote to Bhakti Siddhanta, or his, oh, if I had only joined you earlier, I could be one of your other sannyasis, right? But we see that, uh, you know, from one point of view, Prabhupada's uh, experience in the business world came in really handy when he's pushing on ISKCON. There's so many decisions he made. I don't know if you know about the price affair, you know, you know right in New York, you know, Prabhupada was so, and Bombay, so in one sense, Krishna was, had his own plan and he was equipping him. Now when it comes to us, uh, the answer is no. Everyone is an individual. Some, uh, for some, it's, it's very important for their own stability and their own Krishna consciousness to have a, uh, to, to have a, you know, a prosperous or a comfortable material situation for many of us. You know, for some of us, wild men, like, you know, in the early 70s, just jump off a cliff and join the Hare Krishnas full time, not worry about your future. That's, you know, then it's still happening, brahmacharis are joining. But uh, that's, the vast majority of devotees in this movement are householders, they're congregational members. So nothing should be done precipitously, you know, you can be very prosperous. The question is, what is your, what is your consciousness behind that? Do you find that a, a, a means or a facility for doing service, or do you find the whole situation as an impediment? And that's every every individual has to ask that. So it's not a, it's not a cut and dry thing. It's a, you know, it's it's not necessary that one has to uh, let his business fail and just chant Hare Krishna and, and do the kind of things that you know Prabhupada did externally. You understand? I think that it's not it's not something you know you can just say oh, it's absolutely this way or that way. Each individual has to, know, has to look at his own situation. Yeah, um, you know, there are different levels of Krishna consciousness and surrender and um, uh, just to speak from my own experience, uh, you know, being in the uh, world is that uh, in, in the corporate world, that if you want to be a success in the corporate world, you're probably not going to be a success as a devotee. Because they really the, the demand demands, demands of your time. It, it demands that much time, and it's it's like um, uh, you know if if mercy comes to you, like you were, you were saying about you know how Krishna is taking away your mercy. Well, you also have to receive it too. You know if Krishna is going to, you might not also take that mercy too. And it's just that it, it just seems to me that you're associating with a lot of very materialistic people. Yeah. And to climb that corporate ladder, you have to be friends with them. And what's yeah. that going to do? Probably damage your devotional life. It's pr probably, yeah. Listen, we, you know, we're kind of up against time. I mean, okay. maybe we can talk over, sure. over dinner. Listen, because I want to, we have two, uh, another section. Okay, uh, let's go on. Uh, okay, so that was it. So we're going to, this is the last element, carponnier, which is humility. And um, we'll go on to one of Bhakti Manod's songs. Now, one thing I discovered by meditating on this for the last week or so is that there's a lot of overlap here, you know. In other words, humility kind of all per pervades all of them. <laughs> so it's not like, okay, now we're on humility and, you know, before that we didn't have any humility. But this is especially focusing on this. Okay, let's see what we got here. So this is one of uh, his songs on humility. Uh, I'll say, you say. Prabhu he tu apadi eme nati more. Tu apadi palavat yajito maduman. Vishma vishahe belobo. O Lord, I offer this humble prayer at your lotus feet. I gave up the shelter of your feet, which are as soft as newly grown leaves, and now my mind has become dried up like a desert, being scorched by the fire of absorption in horrible worldliness. I find no strength to rise again, and thus I spend my days bitterly lamenting. 
O Dinanath, master of the meek and humble, your lotus feet are my only hope. There has never been a soul as forlorn as I. Please be merciful and award me your devotee's association. For by tasting the pleasure of hearing discussions of your pastimes, I shall give up all evils. One hope animates my soul, to spend day and night singing your holy name while living in your divine abode. Your servant Bhaktivinoda begs a place in the supremely cooling shade of your lotus feet. What a beautiful song. I'd like to hear the song in Bengali one day soon. So let's go on. Uh, so this is my own little uh, paragraph. As with the other five elements of surrender, the inner mood must be confirmed by external acts. In the case of Karpanye, surrender in humility, part of the surrender is submitting to the Lord what is known as a Dainya Bodhika. You'll find this phrase in the Nectar of Devotion. A Dainya Bodhika, a report concerning one's fallen state. Thus we have the songs of Bhaktivinoda Thakur and abundant verses of Sri Yamanacharya from his Stotra Ratna and many others. But the most famous is the second verse of the Lord Chaitanya's Shikshastaka. We often don't think of it that way, but this is, this is also Dainya Bodhika. He's taking the role of a soul who is so offensive, he doesn't have a taste for the name, right? So, um, let's all chant that one. Hello. Okay. Nam nam akadi bahudani de sarva shaktis. Tatra pitani amitak smarane na kala ho. Eta drishita vakripa bhagavan mamapi. And do dive me drishamiha jane na nuraga ho. Krishna, Govinda, and Keshava too, your names have no end, and then each of them you have invested your potencies, leaving none out. Whenever we want, we can chant them without the slightest restriction of time or of place. O Lord, who can fathom your infinite grace? Yet I am so wretched, devoid of all shame, that I haven't developed a taste for your name. Now this is a perfect example. One, you begin with glorification of the, of the Lord, right? And then there's a, there's a, there's a uh, taking stock. But I can't take advantage of this holy name. I don't have any taste. I haven't developed a taste. I'm having such time, you know, getting up early enough to chant my rounds and I'm so distracted. Yes, it says, Marara Marara Meta Mangalam, and this is the most sweetest of the sweet. But I don't find it so sweet, you know? <laughs> so the first thing is understanding the reality of the holy name. It's such mercy. You come down you know, via Lord Chaitanya and all the disciplic succession. And it's accessible to everybody, every single person. And so we, everyone in this room has, has experienced a lot of the benefits of chanting Hare Krishna. But I know myself, I don't know anyone else, has experienced the full the majesty of the holy name as non-different from Krishna. And just like, I was, I was going to share this first, I don't want to forget, from uh, Brihad Bhagavatam at the very beginning, Sanatan Goswami has his Mangala Charan. And when he says, Jayati Jayati Nam Ananda Rupam Maradhir Vidamita Nija Dharma Dhyana Puja Adi Yatnam Katam Apisakadatam Muktidam Praninam Yat Padamam Amikamiktam Jeevanam Bhushanam Me. So what a wonderful expression. He says, Oh, glories, oh, glories to the holy name of Krishna, which is the very form of bliss. Nam Ananda Rupam. Ananda Rupam means the form of bliss of Murari, Krishna's name. And if you chant it, then you become disinterested in all other so-called means of elevation. Meditation, worshipping the demigods, any other rituals. That becomes insignificant. And if somehow or other anyone chants it, then all of his karma is eliminated, you know, that whole thing. Uh, and then finally says, Padma Mamita Mekam. This is my supreme and soul uh, nectar. Uh, Jivanam, my very life, and my only ornament, he says, you know, for my life. So this is just one expression. He's actually experiencing that. We can become inspired, but this is like a great, 
shining goal on a hill for us, you know, how to get from here to there. So this is an expression of that. He's, he's taking stock. It's a, it's a Dainya Bodhaka in a, in a short one, but it's definitely, he's, he's uh, taking the role, of course, of a conditioned soul. And then, what happens then? He gives the most important expression of Karpanye that there is. And then, of course, Lord Chaitanya provides the most essential instruction on humility for all time. Trinada pisuni chena. Tador api sahishnuna. Amanina manadena. Kirtani aksadaharihi. More humble than a blade of grass, more tolerant than a tree. To think all praise belongs to others, none belongs to me. Such qualities attract the Lord to bless one with the power to chant his name incessantly until the final hour. Now this verse, Krishna's Kaviraj, Lord Chaitanya says, we string it around your neck, means that it should be central to your practice of Krishna consciousness, to your chanting. And you see, it begins with this comparison. What could be more humble than a blade of grass? You know, it's, 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 it's uh, insignificant. But to really feel oneself that everyone else is great. And you find these expressions within the writings, like Krishna's Kaviraj says, I am so sinful, anyone just simply hears my name and he becomes sinful, right? And I'm lower than the worm and stool like that. And they actually feel like that. But it doesn't mean that, and this is important, to be touched on this this morning, and that is that I'm so low, I'm so, you know, uh, impossibly weak in devotional service, there's no way I could be a devotee and I give up. You know, let me go out in the material world and get kicked more and then I'll come back. There's this, this is part of Maya, right? You've, you've seen some of this? So you go out in the world and you get kicked, but you forget all about Krishna because you get down in the modes of nature. <laughs> That's not what humility means. Because real humility, uh, as we heard in the, you know, in, the, in the previous verse, he's first glorifying the power of the holy name and the mercy of the holy name. There's no restriction. You know, we're, we're, in the West, you know, we don't know, what does that mean? You, you, in India, if you try to uh, chant, ladies can't chant the Vedas, you know, what to speak of me, I'm not even a Shudra. You know, I couldn't, chant, I couldn't go and chant, sit in the, amongst the Brahmins of South India and start chanting the Vedas. First of all, they've laughed me out of the, the, the <laughs> my pronunciation, you know, whatever. You know, they train these, these uh, uh, um, Brahmin kids you chant forward and backward. You know, you chant, the, the, you ever hear that? The mantras, you're backwards, you're just, you know, studying the Vedas. It's a whole thing, you know. But uh, Prabhupada came to America. I mean, I can just imagine what they were actually chanting when they first started hearing Hare Krishna. He heard all kinds of things, right? <laughs> Even to this day. <laughs> but what is that? Bhava Grahi Janardana. You know, and it's, that's actually about pronunciation. Did you know that? I forget the Sanskrit now. Um, it says the, the Chandal will chant Vishnaya and the Brahman will chant Vishnave, which is the actual form. But both of them get the result because Baba Grahi Janardana. Janardana, Krishna, he's looking for the mood. You know, he's looking for your actual Baba, your actual state of your consciousness, the mood. So uh, we really are disqualified. But that, but, so in that mood, it's not that we give up. But we, 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 we realize we have no hope but to call out to the Lord at every moment for his protection and for his empowerment. That's the actual meaning of this verse. Now, the tolerant part is interesting because it means uh, it's easy enough to be humble if you're sitting in your room, in your nice, comfortable room, you know, and say, oh, I'm as humble as anything, and I'm tolerant. No, you're not. Tolerance means you're actually facing some difficulty for spreading the movement. So tolerance and compassion and humility go together. They really can't be separated. And here, uh, the, the humility is also expressed. All praise, praise belongs to others and none belongs to me. Because one may be very austere, right? Very detached, sannyasi, you know? But you expect to be honored when you walk into the temple. And if someone doesn't bow down to you soon enough, you know, you, may, you, you, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's not what Krishna is talking about, is that you really feel that I'm insignificant. 
And that I, you know, therefore I just have to constantly chant Hare Krishna and call out to Krishna helplessly. And this is how you can chant all the time, if you feel that way. Very important verse, the, the most important. String it around our neck. So we have a few more. So some of these verses are really special. There's so many of them. Uh, there we go. This is from, you, hey. Oh, I went too far. Okay, forgive me, I'm still learning this thing. So this is again from the Stotra Ratnam. And uh, Shadanagatam is in there. See that third line? Very appropriate verse. Aparada sahasa bhajanam Patitam beam abhavana vodare Agatim Shadanagatam hare Kripaya ke vilamatma satkuru. O Lord Hari, please mercifully accept this person who is the storehouse of thousands of offenses, who has fallen into the terrible ocean of repeated birth and death, who has no place to go, and who now begs shelter from you. So these, you know, these verses, they're Shishi Kishore Kishore Kichai, Jagannath Palade Sabadri Chai Shikornatai Kijai. There's tremendous power in these uh, expressions. I, I remember recently I heard a lecture of Prabhupada's which I highly uh, recommend that we learn how to hear, you know, understand Prabhupada's English. <clears throat> and uh, he was talking about chanting the verses. You know, how much trouble he took. I have a, I have a, a, a Bhaga, Srimad Bhagavatam set at home that that's, wasn't written by Prabhupada. But in my work of, of editing back in the 80s, I needed this because uh, Srila Prabhupada actually used some of the translations there in the third from the third canto. It's printed by the, uh, uh, I forget the, the, the company that printed it, but uh, it was Hanuman Prashad Poda's book. So it's, it's two volumes, the whole Bhagavatam, just the translations plus the Sanskrit, the Devanagari. So Prabhupada took so much trouble and you know, an expense really producing it to give us the transliteration so we could chant the, the synonyms so we could understand the meaning. And then of course there's an invaluable jewel-like purports to explain it. But he, but he, he explains here that this, the sound itself is so powerful. What to speak if you understand? They're, they're mantras. He says each one of the verses in Bhagavatam is a mantra. So this is Stotra Ratnam, which is a you know, very wonderful book. So if you chant these, this, this verse, if you learn it, you, you learn what the meaning is, I can make it all available if you want it. Um, it. It goes deep into your heart. The mood that it's written in, the meaning, comes out and transforms you. Just like the Hare Krishna mantra, which is the most important one. So here is a beautiful expression of that. And I think I can relate to it. And this is another one, one of my favorites from uh, Mukunda Mala Stotra, which Srila Prabhupada began writing before the Bhagavatam. He did about eight or nine verses, beautiful purports. And in 1989, BBT was saying, well, okay, we finished the Bhagavatam now. And what are we going to do? So we decided, well, Prabhupada had two books that he began and didn't finish. This is one of them, and the other is Narada Bhakti Sutra, another nice book. So we finished that book, and Satsu Maharaj wrote some very nice commentary, and Gobi Puranadana uh, helped with the translations. So this is the one, this is text 36. Andhasya me vite viveka mahadhanasya Chaurai prabho balabhi indriya nama deyai Mohanda kupa kuhadevi nipati tasya Devesh dehi kripana sakaravalambham O oh Lord, the powerful thieves of my senses have blinded me by stealing my most precious possession, my discrimination. And they have thrown me deep into the pitch dark well of delusion. Please, O oh Lord of Lords, extend your hand and save this wretched soul. <laughs> That's a beautiful verse. I mean, can't you relate to that? 
you know, the, 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 the senses. That, as Krishna says, one sense that the mind fixes on can steal away your, your mind, just like a wind, the boat on the water, right in the second chapter. It's a, it's a central principle. So he's comparing these senses to thieves. They steal away the discrimination. This is the only thing that differentiates from the animals, is our intelligence, higher intelligence. But if that intelligence is being used to figure out ways to satisfy the senses, that's the lower self controlling the higher self. So the whole idea, remember we had this verse uh, a few days ago, Kama Dinam Katina Katita, where the devotees are saying, in how many ways have I sought to obey the seductive demands of my wicked desires? They've shown me no mercy, yet on I've gone shamelessly trying to quench lust's unquenchable fires. But now I'm rejecting these desires, O Lord, for my higher intelligence now has awoken. O Krishna, O shelter of fearlessness, please let me serve you with faith that will never be broken. This was, uh, I think, in Rakshishatiti uh, Vishwasa, the confidence that Krishna will protect. So what's the key element there? The higher intelligence has awoken. In other words, the intelligence finally realized, what am I doing? You know, I'm just ensuring my further imprisonment in this world of, of, of suffering. Now I know, by reading this book I got from this, this fellow on the street, he was such a nice guy, and he gave me this book, and I'm like, wow, there's a whole other life, a whole other world. Maybe I should go to the Hare Krishnas. You know? So the idea is that the intelligence has been affected, right? It's opened up a new, a new channel of activity. And when that intelligence is strengthened through association, hearing, chanting, reading, working together uh, for Krishna, then you, you become able, you, get, you, you have your will, the will, I'm going to stop that, and I'm going to start that. I'm going to chant, and I'm going to go to the temple. I'm not going to the bar tonight. I'm going to the temple. This is how it works. People come, become devotees. So here, what, what steals away the, the, the intelligence, the discrimination, is these uncontrolled senses. So he's praying there, you, uh, you know, give me, give me your hand. We also had the verse about Krishna dropping the rope down into the well. Again, it's a similar mood. I'm in this dark and dirty and contaminated well of Maya, and there's a snake in here. The snake of lust. Right? Material desire. <laughs> Ready to, venom burns like fire. So helplessly I pray, oh Ajita, you know, con unconquerable Lord, you can save me without doubt. But how? You remember? Place the rope of bhakti down in that well. But what do we have to do? Grab onto it by following the process. Otherwise even Krishna can't pull us out. In, in other words, if we determine to stay here, then we'll stay here. So these, these prayers are really wonderful. So next... More prayers of surrender, uh, humility. Beautiful prayer of King Kulishekar. All right, let's activate our friend here. Madjan manak palamidam madukaita bari. Madpratani madanuga esha eva. Fun Britja Britta Parichadaka Britja 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 Sya Britta Itimam Smadaloka Nata Okay, I don't want to put anyone on the spot. Did anyone know this verse from before? Did you know it? Did you ever read it? You know it, okay. This is really a sweet verse. Obviously, for those who are familiar, this echoes Lord Chaitanya's verse, right? I'm not a sannyasi, I'm not this. I'm just dasa, dasa, no dasa. Servant of the servant of the servant of Krishna. So here he takes it to another level. O enemy of Madhu and Kaitaba, Krishna. O Lord of the universe, the perfection of my life and the most cherished mercy you could show me would be for you to consider me the servant of 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 your servant. <laughs> now that obviously means we should take opportunities to serve each other. This is what it means. This is serve each other. That Krishna appreciates that. He likes that even more than, than, than personal service. Of course, not serve our material you know, side, but we should 
give an look for opportunities to help devotees in their devotional service. And uh, in this way, uh, we can make advancement. That's what this means. That's how, that's how the movement goes on. Again, I was reading this bio wonderful biography of Yamuna, and it was such a, such a group, these six devotees who went there as pioneers to London in 1968, you know? And uh, they, they, they constantly had to you know, help each other. And they also induced many others to help them and in this way make advancement. You know, George became a devotee by helping them to produce the records and do all the things he did. You know? And that was a huge thing for the movement. So don't, don't miss out on that opportunity. Okay, any questions? Moving on. Okay, so now is a couple of verses uh, from Rupa Goswami's uh, Stava Mala, Chaitanya Ashtaka. And here, he, uh, the last word is, you know, Kudra Mukunda Mande Kripam. Mande, he's describing himself as wretched, stubborn, fool. You know, a Manda is someone who's slow. So he's taking this role, and that's why I chose this verse and the next one. I put it into a little poem. So it's beautiful. There's three of these Chaitanyasikas at the beginning of the Stavamala. Okay. Aham kanaka ketaki kusama gora dushtak chito. Nadosha lamadarshita vivida dosha purni piti. Atak pravana yadiya kripana vatsala tvam bhaji Shachi suta mahi pabho kodamukunda mande kripam O Lord whose splendor calls to mind the golden daffodil I am the lowest sinner in this world of sinners still you overlook the faults of one whose faults are like an ocean and bless him with the strength to practice on the Lord devotion. With this in mind, O Lord, who are most kind to fallen souls, I ask you with a humble heart, devoid of mundane goals, O Lord Chaitanya, Sri Mukunda, Shachi's precious jewel, please shower your compassion on this wretched, stubborn fool. I put this one into the poem because I could really relate to that last line, you know. <laughs> This is a beautiful expression by Rupa Goswami. Now this idea of the golden daffodil, this is something probably that is lost in Iskand antiquity. But in the first printing of the Krishna book, I think it was two volumes. It may have been in the three volume, but the back of the book, of one, of the, one of the volumes, had this full blown picture of Srila Prabhupada. Beautiful picture. And he's looking at this yellow daffodil, you know, with a wonderful expression. And, you know, it's a very nice picture. And then I heard from somebody who was on the inside of that whole thing that Prabhupada said that this is the, this is the color of Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> now, this is, you know, that's why he was attracted to <laughs> So that's why this, this Ketaki is not exactly a daffodil, but I put the daffodil in there because um, it called to my mind the golden daffodil anyway. So, you know, you can, I mean, we can analyze this. The, the idea is that, again, humility doesn't mean paralysis. It doesn't mean depression. It means recognizing one's helplessness and that for any chance to succeed, we have to be empowered by the Lord. And he's so merciful and so powerful that he can do it. And therefore, even though I'm the lowest sinner of sinners, and, you know, the background, still recalling Jagai and Madai and all the others, uh, you overlook the faults. Of, of someone who's very sinful and bless him with the strength to practice on the Lord devotion. If we really want it, if we pray and chant hard enough, sincerely enough, then we become empowered. You know? But it means we have to put ourselves in a, in a situation where we need to be empowered. Right? So that's where you know, preaching mission comes in, sincerity. So it's a lot, a lot in here. And I think there's one or two more here. Yeah, this is one of my all-time favorites. It's from the same poem. Bhavandi bhuvihe nara kalata dushka lod patayas Bhavandi 
समुन्नत सिद्धान पी पचेद चारु कारुन्यता इति प्रमुदी दान्तरा शदन माश्विता स्थानहम् शचीसुतमाहि प्रभो कुडमोकंद मंदे कृपाम् There's that word Shadonam again. Even low-born sinful souls entrapped in Kali's age, suffering most dreadful pains that no one can assuage, are instantly delivered when you kindly seek them out and flood them with your splendid mercy, making bhakti sprout. And so, with heart rejoicing at your mercy's endless store, I take full shelter of your lotus feet and then implore, O Lord Chaitanya, Sri Mukunda, Shachi's precious jewel, please shower your compassion on this wretched, stubborn fool. So that's just a beautiful uh, appreciation of Lord Chaitanya's mission or that, is, that, he, that he accepted or took on in this world. Of, uh, and you, you know, there's a wonderful passage in Antya Leela where Lord Chaitanya is lamenting how is he going to save all the conditioned souls and Haridas Thakur is encouraging him. Don't worry, you know, just by chanting in Jarikhan Forest, all, everyone is delivered. Everyone is delivered. So Prabhupada in the purport says, this is real devotion, to try to alleviate the anxiety of Lord Chaitanya by preaching Krishna consciousness. <laughs> so this is uh, why he's rejoicing. And then I think we have, what do we have next? So then this is the final uh, Quote, Finally, the ideal seed of humility from which the entire Iskand tree has grown. Srila Prabhupada's Markane Bhagavat Dharma poem. Now, I didn't give the whole poem, but I, that's why the dots are there, but this is near the end. So Prabhupada's praying. You know, he's, he, he just went on this very difficult, excruciating trip all across the ocean. He's come now to Boston, and he's got off the boat. He's in the, in the, in the uh, port there. And he's writing this uh, in Bengali. This is translation. How will I make the fallen Westerners understand this message of Krishna consciousness? I am very unfortunate, unqualified, and the most fallen. Therefore, I am seeking your benediction so that I can convince them, for I am powerless to do so on my own. Somehow or other, O oh Lord, you have brought me to the West to speak about you. Now, my Lord, it is up to you to make me a success or failure as you like. O oh, spiritual master of all the worlds, I can simply repeat your message. So if you like, you can make my power of speaking suitable for their understanding. Only by your causeless mercy will my words become pure. I am sure that when this transcendental message penetrates their hearts, they will certainly feel gladdened and thus become liberated from all unhappy conditions of life. O oh Lord, I am just like a puppet in your hands. So if you have brought me here to dance, then make me dance. Make me dance, O oh Lord. Make me dance as you like. I have no devotion, nor do I have any knowledge, but I have strong faith in your holy name. I have been designated as Bhaktivedanta. And now, if you like, you can fulfill the real purport of Bhaktivedanta. So that's the supreme expression of humility, surrender and empowerment as well. And that concludes end of part three. So any questions or comments on anything we've covered in these three parts? We have about eight minutes until the next program starts. Otherwise, we're gonna go into some Rupa rap. You ready for that? Yes, sir, okay. Um, the mic. How can we get the mic? Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for sharing the uh, definition of humility and also the example of Srila Prabhupada exhibiting humility. <clears throat> I wanted to know, uh, are there more examples of Srila Prabhupada exhibiting humility that you can uh, share with us? Especially in the light of uh, uh, when uh, Srila Prabhupada is um, 
like in his own words is a lamb at home and a tiger in the chase sometimes he would exhibit like very 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 strong um <clears throat> uh, 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 preaching against the mayavada philosophy and things like that so how can we see that as also humility for our own understanding and benefit yeah it gets uh, it's a little hard i mean there's so many examples of proper humility one thing that came um to mind as he was speaking is that even you know in some of his letters he he thanks his devotees and he says uh you're on you know officially your spiritual master but i regard you as my spiritual masters you know because you've been sent by my spiritual master to help me in this mission and all these things which is just like an amazing statement but this uh this other consideration as you say this this came up this morning i think in 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 a form um humility doesn't always manifest in in the way that we might accept on the on the on the material side humility also uh, often just means self effacement in any situation you know but krishna consciousness means something different and that is that you can see that that last prayer that last part of that prayer markana bhagavata dharma he's praying for empowerment he's praying that krishna will make his power of speaking such that he will penetrate the hearts in other words he's really saying i don't know what's going to happen you know <laughs> he took a look out at the boston skyline and he saw the mood you know the of the people there and he says it, it seems impossible it just seems impossible that i'm going to be able to penetrate their hearts so in the uh, in in each cir- different circumstance it's uh it, it's not a, a given it's not so obvious how this humility may uh, express itself because the key is he's 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 humble recognizing his position in relation to krishna it's just like arjun nimitta matram bhava sabya sachin you become my agent right now in arjun's case well was he proud you know when he was fighting no he was still humble but he was fierce he had to be angry at the other side and shooting these arrows it's not the obvious description of what you would call humility but it was but he was expressing it because he was completely in tune with krishna's desires and so that that's the important takeaway from this is that the humility means first of all you know the first prerequisite is to become krishna conscious to increase our krishna consciousness because as soon as we forget krishna the false ego immediately jumps on us you know and my maya grabs you you know that that famous verse from jagadananda pandit um boga vancha kori nikatastamaya tari japati yadari krishna puli se boga vancha kori that we forget krishna turn away from krishna but krishna boha mukaji boga vancha kori nikatastamaya tari japati yadari is that as soon as the idea of sense gratification comes that means we've turned ourselves away from krishna bahi mukha you know boga vancha because we want to enjoy and maya is right there it's just like on this football field you know where they tackles you and pulls you down and covers you up the two things is 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 you know attacking and also covering so the 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 uh the, the real christian conscious devotee never forgets christian never gets his position so in that sense he's the humblest he feels anything i do from you know taking a breath or speaking or anything is simply krishna's mercy on me and so i need to uh tune my will to krishna's will and sometimes that means you know often times in present day be being very fierce fighting prabhu's guru was the lion guru he would you know he would he would physically shake those maya bodies on the street and say why are you misguiding people because that's mercy for all the thousands of people that are being misguided by these these guys you know so so uh, th- th- we have to see how the you know mercy manifests in different contexts contexts and some we saw the picture of prabod you know before the deities of krishna balaram he's you know offering prayer you know that's kind of the default you know but in the field when it's when it's on krishna's mission sometimes uh it's very forthright and he, you know even with his devotees sometimes he would become furious because they did some nonsense wasted krishna's money or whatever it might be but it was all for teaching it was all out of mercy and he you know and and you could tell this distinction between that anger and material anger because it wouldn't contaminate 
If you, if you become angry out of mode of passion and ignorance, it contaminates your whole body, kind of, you know? And, uh, you know, you, you won't be able to sleep that night or whatever, you know? And if it goes on like that, you can get sick. But Prabhupada's anger was just like a scalpel. And he was teaching with it. The next moment, the same devotee, he was, you know, congratulating him on some other service that he did. You know what I'm saying? And the devotees who were with him at the time, uh, who were mature, were very thankful that Prabhupada cared enough to get angry at us, to, to correct us. That's the relationship. So it's, it, you have to really change your perspective. What, you know, understand what real humility is. Humility is constantly, always 100%, pure devotees, recognizing their, their uh, dependent relationship on the Lord. But then that means working as his agent, which sometimes you have to express this or that and look, you know, be in a certain way that doesn't look humble externally. Any other comments, question? Uh-oh, we're almost out of time. Okay, go ahead. He, he's, what's up? Okay, yeah, get this. <laughs> this is his hint. He wants me to end. Oh, now it works. Hare Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Um, my question is not directly related to humility or surrender, partly to surrender, I guess. And uh, it's more about Groptrute uh, Varnam Tata and Rakshati Svasa. So, in that context, uh, I mean, I'm not at that level. At the same time, I'm still depending upon material energy for many things, right? Health, I see a doctor, you know, what, whatever comes. So, where do we draw the line or understand? Am I really taking the will of Krishna or I'm still depending upon material energy? You know, I'm saving money, I'm doing, having a bank balance, having an insurance, and many things. And at the same time, Shri Kishore Kishore Ki Jai, Gornitai Ki Jai, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. So we don't want to step on the uh, RT, but we'll try to answer that and then we'll yes. adjourn. Um, as I say, every, everyone is an individual case. Um, and we shouldn't do anything precipitously. But the general principle is to, is to see whatever situation we're in, try to see. Sometimes it's very difficult, but try to see uh, Krishna's hand in it and try to see how we can uh, work in that situation and still stay connected to Krishna, that it's for his purpose. Yes, we have insurance. Yes, uh, you know, when, when Prabhupada was on the planet, we had car insurance. Why? Because, you know, the cars would get stolen or broken or something like that. So for, for Krishna's mission, if you can, you, you can see how it's working, then so many things are possible. Um, but it's dangerous. The more we get enwrapped in the material side, the more we have the chance to forget. And so that's why, as I always say, we need a very strong morning program and if possible evening program at home where we can control the environment and to give us the strength so that we don't get swept away by, by material energy. We may be able to discuss it later in the prasad. All glories to the Prabhupada. Thank you. <laughs>